turn it over to Brother Fred. You want to receive your inheritance so you can pass it out, pass it along. You want your children, your grandchildren, uh, your spiritual children, the people around you to receive the inheritance, to walk in their inheritance as well. So the title of the message today is Distributing the Inheritance. And uh, we'll start with some pretty familiar uh, verses, but uh, we'll look at it from the eyes of the Holy Spirit and what he's saying now. And if we look at the Old Testament, we see that God used Joshua uh, to lead his people into the promised land. And uh, then we have a parallel with that. In the New Testament, God uses Jesus uh, to lead uh, his people into the land of promises. So we're mm -hmm. looking at promises today, and uh, that's related to our inheritance. And what I want you to know is you've got to overcome some enemies, and you've got to stand on the promises. What, uh, mm -hmm. what promises are you standing on? Uh, you know, I've got uh, a promise on my uh, refrigerator that's been there for years, and uh, I haven't taken it down. It's been amazing because God honored that. It was the scripture as Isaiah uh, 49 verses 24 and 25. He said he was going to deliver my son out of, uh, out of that was illegally captive. And he did. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for that. But I had a promise to stand on. You need to have promises to stand on. So you overcome the enemy and you have promises to stand on. That's a part of the inheritance. Now, what we're going to look at to begin with are the about the 12 spies, and this is in Numbers uh, 13 and 14, and we're all very familiar with it, but it's good to go over these verses again because there are some specific things I want to point out. But first of all, let's look at the unbelief of the 10 spies who went in there and came back with a bad report, an evil report. Mm. It was called an evil report, and we want to have a good report and so let's look first at the unbelievers, the 10 spies. I'll call them the unbelievers. Let's see what they said. This is in Numbers 13, 31 through 33. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out. The land through which we have gone has spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great statue. We saw giants and we were like little grasshoppers in their sight. And so we were in their sight. Have you had a bad report lately? Somebody giving you a bad report? We hear bad reports a lot of the time even bad reports about what's going on in uh, their bodies or in their minds, in the, their marriages, in their relationships, bad reports. But let's turn to a good report. Let's look at what Caleb and Joshua said. This is, these are the two who believed uh, the, what God had said. Let's read that. And we're going to just go slowly here. Okay. This is in Numbers 14, verse 9. Only do not rebel against the Lord. Oh, I, I've got to stop here. Okay. What is rebellion? Rebellion is not fighting for your promised land, Ooh, for your promises. Rebellion. Oh, yeah. you think, oh, rebellion is if I, oh, wow. if I if go, you go out, out and sin. You go out and sin, uh, some big sin. No, rebellion is not fighting for what God has promised you. Oh, oh my goodness. Let that sink in. Wow. Rebellion. I repent right now. Lord, is not in Jesus fighting name. for mm. what God has given you. Mm. You have sickness in your body. Are you fighting oh, for it? Do you oh. have marital problems. Are you fighting for it? No, you have relationship, relationship problems, problems. Uh, with your children or siblings or other people. Are you fighting for mm. the promises? Mm. Don't rebel against God. Whatever God has promised you, you need to fight for it. Oh okay? wow! Go ahead. Nor fear the people of the land. For they are our bread. Oh, oh listen to that. Oh, you've got to pause here. Wow. The, the giants are your bread. Now, that's very Ooh, interesting. Wow. Now, you've got to defeat a giant. 
in order to have nourishment for your journey. Oh, dear Jesus. Oh, I just want to fight little bitty. Oh, uh, little bitty yes, people. Little bitty <laughs> opposition. No. The giants are your bread. That's where you're going to get Woo! nourishment for the journey ahead. You've got to be eating and gobbling up those giants. Oh, hallelujah. The giants are your bread. But they are our bread. Okay. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. This. Oh, hallelujah. The, I, Caleb and Joshua oh, came thank in you, Jesus. agreement. And they said some incredible things. I want Jerry to go through it. We won't talk so much about it. I just want you to listen to what they said. This is standing on the promises. That They were standing on the promises. Listen wow, to what they said, wow. how they said. They didn't say God was going to do something. He said their defenses are already destroyed. They're, They're already down. It's already down. All we have to do is just go in there. Mm. Okay, let's look at this. Here. Read it Okay, again. I'm reading out of Numbers 14 and 9. Those of you that have just joined, we're talking about inheritance uh, today. Uh, and the promises only do not rebel against the Lord nor fear the people of the land for they are our bread their protection has already departed from them and the Lord is with us do not fear them hallelujah that, that is very powerful right there it's very it's faith-filled words wow wow there, there's no doubt and unbelief in that those ten spies the, the, their thinking was just so perverted and so against God. They were rebelling against God. But here we see that we're not to rebel. We need to fight for the promises. God has given you some promises that you haven't received yet, and you need to fight for it. We're going to talk about how to do that today. You need to fight for those promises. It's rebellion mm, not mm, to, to fight. fight. For the promises, mm, mm, a, mm. And, and well, not the, I, I think about another area that people come to us and they want prayer for their finances. Uh, they need more income coming in. They need uh, new tires, or they need their car fixed, or or and and other things. And but they're not actually fighting with the word of God, they're not fighting. And so they're this what by what this says, they're in rebellion. And that need that stronghold needs to come down and they need to be taught this word. That's right. And you know, rebellion is as the sin, sin of, of witchcraft. witchcraft. So not fighting for your promises is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, let me go on to the other part that he said there, that your giants are your bread. Now, remember what Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 11? Mm -hmm. Give us this day our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Or we could put it this way. Give me my daily giant, giant. that I can bring <laughs> down. Give me my daily giant. Have you, I love have you, it. I love have it. you had your bread today? Have you, have you defeated a, a giant, giant today? today? Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name that, of Jesus. That's, that's the bread you need. You need to mm, overcome. Mm. You need to receive your promises. You've got to stand on the promises and you've got to fight some giants. giants. You've got to overcome them. Mm, Give us this mm, day mm. our daily giant. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, Jesus looks at things differently than we do. We, we want little bitty enemies. We, we want enemies that are just going to uh, fall over, fall over. <laughs> <laughs> but he said give us you know like caleb said give me, give this me that mountain. mountain that's where the giants are give me, me this, this mountain, mountain. i'm 80 years, of, 80 years of age and I, my strength and i'm still strong i still can do it <laughs> i want my mountain and i'm going to bring down the giants in it you know i want to i want to say something brother fred is like caleb uh, you know, he is he is a fighter and he's going to be 80 years old in November and he's still saying, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. Amen. Give, me my, give me my giant today. Woo! I've got to uh, chew up a giant and spit yeah. it out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, the title of the message today is Distribute the Inheritance. And, and 
this is really important because God, see, gave Moses and Joshua gave the people in the past, he gave them uh, these commandments to distribute the inheritance. And, and some of them did it and some of them didn't. But you know, he's saying the same thing to you today. Distribute the inheritance. Pass it out. Pass out the inheritance. Make sure your children have their inheritance. Make sure your grandchildren have their inheritance. See, it's not enough just to say, say oh, I, I'm doing good. I'm, I am good and I'm doing good. And I, I go to church services uh, and I come home and I, I just am good and I do good. That's not enough. We've got to pass on the inheritance. Mm, We've got to fight yeah. some fights. We, we don't want our children our grandchildren, the people around us, not to get their inheritance. I mean, it starts mm -hmm. with you. you got to have their inheritance in order for you to pass out something. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about something spiritually that God has promised you. You've got to receive those things, and then you need to be teaching other people how they can receive the inheritance. He's saying distribute the inheritance. Pass it out. Divide it out. We'll start with Moses. Moses didn't do it, but he was given a commandment to do it. Let's read uh, Numbers here, Sherry. Num numbers thirty three fifty four, And you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your families. That, that was Moses. He was speaking specifically to Moses, and we know Moses didn't mm -hmm. do it. That's a rebellion against not, not fighting for oh, it. Oh, wow, wow, he, wow. He didn't fight for it. He didn't ha it mm -hmm. didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. But then he comes back and he tells Joshua, okay, okay. to the ne this next generation, you divide the inheritance. You divide the land. This is the promised land. Today we're living in the promises, the land of promises. Hallelujah. So this is really speaking to all of us. We need not only just living a good life, we need to be making sure our legacy is that Amen. others are receiving their inheritance as, as well. well. Hallelujah. And in Joshua okay. 1, 3, it says, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given it unto you. Okay. You've got Hallelujah. to stand on the promises that God has mm -hmm. given you. Mm -hmm. See, all you, you look at all those people. They could have stood on the other side of Jordan and just looked over there and said, well, God has given us that. Oh, isn't that, ooh, isn't that wonderful? Look God, at those nice trees uh, over there. God has given us all. We have to go stand on it. And we have to defeat some mm, enemies. We've got to go mm, stand mm, mm. on our promises. Stand on the promises, what God has promised you. You've got to stand on them. Okay, so that was first I wanted to point out. Joshua, he said, go Stand on things. Go stand on the land. That's right. what you're going to get. It's one thing to look at it, but you've got to receive it. You've got to stand on it. Okay. Joshua next, 1 6. Now, I know everyone here can probably quote this scripture, and you've all heard it preached to you, but I want you to really open your heart to what God is saying. Be strong and of good courage. Haven't you heard that? People have told you, your mm -hmm. ministers have told, told you, your pastors have told you over and over be strong and of a good courage. But you know, the, the verse doesn't end there. What's the next part of it? For to this people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Okay. So, so we all know, and, and we've heard it preached to us many times, we are to be strong. Yes. And courageous. And courageous. That's number two. And three distribute the inheritance. Well, we probably haven't heard that, but it's there in the same verse, the same verse that says, be strong and be courageous, Religious. distribute the inheritance. Hallelujah. Make sure Here. that your children and your grandchildren get their inheritance and the people around you get their inheritance. Be sure. Hallelujah. That, that's what that verse Hallelujah. says. Don't, don't preach it and, and do the first two. Bill, be strong and be courageous and don't, Tell people you've got to distribute. You've got to pass the inheritance on. Let's look at it. I'm not talking about money mm -hmm. today. I'm talking about spiritual things. Okay, go ahead. Joshua 11, 23. Now, this is Joshua did exactly what God told him. He distributed the inheritance. Read it. So Joshua took the whole land 
according to that the Lord had said to Moses. And Joshua gave it as an inheritance to Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes. Okay. So he did what the Lord wanted him to do. He distributed the inheritance. Now, in every generation, there are people who are supposed to distribute the inheritance. Moses was, but Moses didn't do it. Joshua was supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. He gathered up the leaders that there were all kinds of leaders uh, that were to come together to help him in every tribe. Uh, and, and so it's for all the different families. You are in a critical role in your in your own family. You need to be distributing the inheritance. Make sure that they get in the inheritance. Don't let it stop with you. Hallelujah. It's not a, good enough to just say, oh, I'm, I'm a good Christian and I'm going to live a good life on this earth and then I'm going to go on. And I have the word in me and I have the spirit in me. <laughs> and I'm going to go on to heaven when I, I lay down this body. And that says nothing about your children or your, or your legacy mm. or the people around you. Part of your assignment is make sure other people can walk in their inheritance. Mm, We're going to mm, tell you how to mm, do it today. Mm, mm. Okay. Now, but it's in every generation. It has to be in every generation. See, it was in the generation of Moses was in. It was in the, then it was in the Joshua, but then we go on and see it here in Ezekiel. It's for another generation. There has to be leaders in every generation in every family to be sure that the people in the families get their inheritance. Mm. In Ezekiel 47, 21. Thus you shall divide this land. Now he's talking to Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. He's talking about some people who have been exiled out of uh, Jerusalem and out of Israel. They've been over there in, in Babylon. They've been over there for years. But that time of exile is about over with. They're going to come back. And somebody has to make sure that the inheritance is distributed to that generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. It says, uh, he, thus you shall divide this land yourself according to the tribes of Israel. And then Ezekiel 48, 29. This is the land which you shall divide by lot as an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. Of course, this is in the natural realm. This is in the physical that these scriptures are. But today we're talking about spiritual things. Your faith, your your belief in healing, your uh, you're supposed to be distributing. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're, we've given some examples now in the Old Testament, but that's a parallel to what goes on here. See, Joshua led the people into the Promised Land. That's the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, here we are. Jesus is leading us into the land of promises, mm -hmm. and, and where are they? Well, right here in uh, second Peter and we're going to go through a few a few verses here and, and we're going to see some things about our inheritance what is your inheritance mm -hmm. okay second Peter 1 2 through 4 again these are familiar scriptures grace and peace be multiplied to you okay. in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord okay I won't just go slow your inheritance is an abundance of in abundance, an abundant inheritance, grace and peace be multiplied. Okay, it's your inheritance. We're talking about your inheritance here. And your inheritance is in a, an abundant inheritance. Mm, mm, and God mm. is the source of your inheritance. And Jesus is the, is the channel through which you receive the inheritance. And you get it through the knowledge. You have to n know mm -hmm. about this. See, if you don't know about this, you don't get your inheritance. Okay, so we're talking about the inheritance. It's right here in Second Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 2 through 4. Is that right? That's exactly right. Okay, number okay. three. Okay. As his divine power has given unto you, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge again there's knowledge of him who called us by glory 
and virtue. Okay, so what it says, it's his power that's giving us the inheritance. It's his power. And you might say, well, I don't have any power. Well, <laughs> get a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit because he is the power of God. Amen. And it's through the power that you get this inheritance we're talking about. Through the power, okay? And okay. it's going to give God the glory. See, it, it, you've got to receive your promises to give God the glory. If we're not fighting mm -hmm. for the promises, we're rebelling against God's plan and against God. Okay, go By ahead. which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Okay. Mm -hmm. Promises. The whatever you need, your provision is in the promises. Mm -hmm. See, when you face a problem, God mm -hmm. gives you a promise. He, he doesn't, mm, mm, it, it, it just doesn't fall out of the air, mm. it, it, out of heaven. It just, he doesn't rain uh, dollar bills out of heaven. I found that out. He doesn't, he just doesn't rain dollar bills. What he gives you when you have a problem is a promise. And that is your inheritance. It's not dollar bills being rained out of heaven. It's not other things being rained out of heaven. He always gives you a promise. Amen. The provision Amen. and the inheritance oh, is in, in the, the promise. promise. Ooh, so let's, good. let's go back good. and go over these points again. Your inheritance is abundant. It's an abundant inheritance. Mm -hmm. Number two, God is the source. Number three, Jesus is the channel and it comes through the knowledge. It said the word knowledge in these two verses, it said it twice. Must Knowledge must be really important. You have to know what I'm teaching you today. You have to understand what I'm teaching you today. We have to acknowledge Jesus Christ is our Lord and, and Savior. Savior. And it's through him that we receive the promises and the power of God. It's the power mm -hmm. of God that gives us the promises and the pro whatever the problem is, God gives you a promise. He doesn't rain dollar bills out mm -hmm, of heaven mm -hmm. because they would be counterfeit. It wouldn't be your government. Mm -hmm. They would be counterfeit if he printed uh, uh, money in heaven and rained it out on you. What he gives you is your inheritance is a promise. You have to realize mm -hmm. your inheritance is the promise. Your provision, whatever you need, is in the promise, and it comes through the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? And, well, I just want to give an example here, and that is uh, when the Lord spoke to me, uh, Psalms 118, verse 17, when they told me I had terminal cancer, he, he gave me a promise. He gave me, and it says that your provision is in the promise. And so what was my provision? My provision was healing, but it came through the promise. It came through me believing the word of God that I should not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And there were other, many other uh, scriptures that he gave, but that's the one he gave me. And my provision of healing was in that promise. That That's okay. beautiful. Okay, let's go on, let's read on. Okay. About the nature. Okay. We're partakers. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature of God, okay. having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Okay. So it's the promise that gives us the nature of God. As we begin to stand on the promises, fight the enemies, receive the promises, we begin to take on the nature of God. We become love and we become peace and we become, we begin to take on the nature of God. And by taking on the nature, that expels all of the corruption in our lives. It, it mm, expels mm. when you bring his nature. See, his nature cannot abide with corruption. So when you partake of his nature, it expels the corruption in your life. You become more and more like him. So your inheritance it is the promises, the promises. That's your inheritance. 
and you get more and more of the promises, you become more and more like God. And ultimately, your ultimate inheritance is to become, uh, just to have his nature in you. Mm. You become like him. I mean, you're being transformed from glory, glory to, glory to glory into the image of Jesus Christ. That's your ultimate inheritance to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. That Amen. doesn't make you Christ. Amen. It's just you're being transformed into the image of Christ. Now, let's go back to a point in the old in the Old Testament that says the what was the inheritance of the priest? And the inheritance of the priest was God, was the Lord. Mm, what, what, mm, their portion. Mm, mm, See, they didn't get they didn't get what other people got. Mm, mm, they got God. And what they got was better. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what they got was the best you could get. Amen. It was God. That was the ultimate inheritance. Okay. Well, let's read ahead. Deuteronomy 18, verses okay. 1 and 2. The priests, the Levites, all the tribe of the Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his portion therefore they shall have no inheritance among their brethren the lord is their inheritance oh, hallelujah. as he has said to them as he has said to them okay so here's the priest in the old testament the priest the inheritance of the priest was the lord himself that's better oh, wow. that's better than anything else you could have now who are you? Well, Peter says, you are a priest. Oh, oh yeah. let's look at this. First Peter 2, First, 9. Hallelujah. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his glorious light. Okay. So let's just look at this. We saw there in Second Peter 1 that we're partaking of those promises, and that's changing us into the nature of God. We're being uh, conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, and ultimately, our ultimate inheritance is to be like Jesus, mm -hmm. <laughs> because we are the priest. Okay, but when we start one one uh, promise at a time, this promise, that promise, this promise, those are our inheritance. As we, as we gather those inheritances up, uh, one after another, then we're being made more and more like the image of, of Christ. And see, that gives God glory. When you receive a promise, you glorify God. You fight for it. Amen. You stand on the promise. You overcome. You eat uh, some giant. Give me this giant as my bread today. Amen. And Amen. you stand on the promise. And then when you receive that promise, that gives God the glory. That's what it's all about. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Now, let's just think for a minute. That's what we want to do. We want to the Lord to be our inheritance. Uh, we are the priests and the priests don't get the other things. They get the Lord. Mm -hmm. The best thing mm -hmm. comes to them. Oh, Hallelujah. That, that, Hallelujah. Is, that is wonderful. Now, I, I want us to think about uh, that, that full inheritance and think about 2 uh, Corinthians one twenty. Is that what mm -hmm. it is? 2 Corinthians 120. Now, I want you to know that there are seven to 8,000 promises. And so what we do, we receive those promises one by one, what, what is appropriate for your situation and what you need. You can receive all of those. And that's what we're going to see mm -hmm. in this verse right here. Read this here. It says in 2 Corinthians 120. In what translation? This is in the New International a translation. For no matter how many promises God has made. Okay, he's made seven or eight thousand. 
And they are a, yes in Christ. Okay, so Christ is saying, yes, he's already purchased them for you. Well, it's seven, yours. Seven it's or eight thousand. It's always yours. You find a promise, he speaks a promise mm. to you. You receive a promise. You receive a prophetic word, it's a promise. It's yes, it's for you. Yes, and I You don't mean, have to think, oh, oh yeah. is this for somebody else? No, it's for you. It, yes, it's for you. And then what? And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Okay. We so, say amen. We okay. we are agreeing. Okay. So Jesus is saying yes. He's the mm -hmm. he's the channel to receive the promises. But seven or eight thousand promises, whatever you need, they're all out there. And it's always yes. Always yes. The promise. When you get the promise, yes, it's for you. And then you say, Amen, let it be. Amen, let it be. Amen. And then, let it be. And then you receive the promises and that glorifies God. Oh, read Hallelujah. This verse Hallelujah. Read this verse and I just want to say, like for this uh, for instance, the, the scripture of the verse that by his stripes you were healed. That Jesus says yes to that. Yes, and when you. you and when you say amen, let then be. that let it be. Uh come come to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then then that that healing is gonna come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You'll be to read the whole yeah, verse. Yeah, okay. read it again. This is for good. no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us. Or we say amen to it, we agree to it, to the glory of God. And that's going to give glory to God. Yeah, he, you, gets, he gets the glory. When the promise is fulfilled in your life, then God gets the glory. Amen. And amen. if you don't fight for your promises, then that's rebellion against him. So mm, we don't want mm, to do that. Mm, we want to. Eat up those giants. That, yeah, and what would be yeah. the giants? Well, they might be doubt, unbelief, whatever mm -hmm. they are. Depression, anxiety. Hopelessness. Uh, hopelessness. Uh, if those are giants in your life. Poverty, a poverty spirit. Eat them up. Eat them up. That's, you get nourishment. Oh, give me a, give me my giant. Giant today. today. I'm going uh, to devour that giant. Woo! Now, the thing about promises, many of them are conditional. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28, verses mm, 1 and 2. Two. They're in our condition. You have to know what the conditions are. There are promises, but then there are conditions, and you have to make sure you meet the conditions. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all of his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth, but what does it say here? What is the condition? The condition is to diligently obey the voice of the Lord. And what is he speaking to you today? Okay. So you have to obey. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he's saying. You've got to hear what he says. And see, most people, are, most Christians are just going through life and they think, okay, I'll go to another service and I'll be a good, th good person and I'll pray and I'll do this and that. And... and but we have to fight for the promises. We have to eat those giants, mm -hmm. devour them. Mm -hmm. They're going to give you the strength to go on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's conditional. Okay. Also want to just give you the example of, of uh, Abraham. You know, Abraham, let's look at him. He didn't, he didn't stagger when he found the promise. He didn't stagger. Mm -hmm. And we saw all those uh, 10 spies. They were staggering. Oh, we yeah, can't do yeah. it. But let's look at what Abraham did. In Romans 4, 20 and 21, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how he was strengthened. That was how, that's how his faith uh, rose up in him. It says, and being fully convinced are fully persuaded that he had that he had promised what God had promised him that he was able to bring it about. He was able to perform it. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. he got it. He got the promise. He got the promise. And it affected you and me, our life. He's the father of our faith. We need to see mm -hmm. what he did. And and we don't need to be wavering back and forth. We need to be st standing 
standing strong. Mm -hmm. That's really mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Now, there are conditions. Now, let's look at Romans 8, uh, verses 16 and 17. There's an if here. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then we are heirs. Okay, we've got an inheritance. Hallelujah. Heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus Christ. Okay, well, whatever Jesus has, it's ours. Whatever he has, it's ours. We have the same inheritance that he has. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So we have an inheritance. And it's all in the promises. Okay, go ahead. If indeed we suffer with him. If. Oh, here's an if. Here's a condition. Mm -hmm. If we suffer with him. Okay. That we may also be glorified and then together. God, then God's going to be glorified if we suffer. So I'm going to let Sherry talk about it. This if we suffer. What does that mean? If we suffer. That word there, suffer, means allow. We are to allow God into our business, into our bodies, into our minds. That we are to allow him or suffer him to work with us, to uh, create in us uh, the perfect heart. To create in us and to and to bring us into maturity. And this is the, you know, we do not go to the cross because Jesus went to the cross. And so we do not, um, it's not sickness or disease. He's not talking about accidents. He's not talking about evil and making that into something that's, you know, that's profitable to us. And, you know, I know that he turns evil to good. But this this word right here means to allow him entrance into our lives. To work in our lives. To work in our lives. Then we receive the inheritance and he gets the glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's how it works. If we've got a problem, he gives us a promise. That's our inheritance. And then if we believe it, we eat those giants, devour those giants that are mm -hmm. trying to mm -hmm. keep from getting it. And we have a promise and we stand on the promise. And when we're, that promise is fulfilled, that's our breakthrough. And God gets the glory. Now Amen. I have Amen. one other set of scriptures and I bring this to a close. We need to find the promise that God has given you. Mm -hmm. Find the Amen. promises and stand on them. Hallelujah. And, and put them on your refrigerator. Put them on your mirror. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, write them on your hand. What are the promises yeah. that you're Amen. standing on? See, standing is a big part of this message. If you're going to, you're going to receive the inheritance yourself and you're going to divide it to your family, mm -hmm. to your children, mm -hmm. to your grandchildren, to, to your friends, friends, to your neighbors, you, you've got to be <clears throat> devouring those giants as your daily bread. You've got to be standing on the promises. Read this from Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. And you know that this is anybody who knows me is this is one of my favorite scriptures. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand. Mm -hmm. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. If that's not a giant, I don't know what is. That is a giant right there. Those are giants. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having to done all, continue to stand. You've got to stand on some promises. Hallelujah. See, Joshua took those people into the promised land and they had to stand on that land. They couldn't uh, stand on the other side of the Jordan and say, oh, I see the land. Oh, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's flowing it's with milk and honey. <laughs> it's got uh, clusters of grave. It, uh, but see, they had to go stand on it. You have to go stand, stand on your promise. promise. How do you stand on your promises? Like I said, you, you write them down, write them down, put them on your refrigerator, mm -hmm. put them on your mirror, put them on the back Confess of your them out of your mouth. Start speaking. Talk just like Joshua spoke. Oh, glory to God. Right, let's go over that again mm -hmm, uh, there mm -hmm. in uh, 14, nine, uh, mm -hmm. Numbers 14.9. Let's just see how he stood on the yes. promise here. 
Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Hallelujah. That's, those are words of faith. He's standing on Hallelujah. promises. Hallelujah. What promises are you standing on? What giants are you devouring? Glory to God. These Amen. are important questions. What? You know, a giant, one of the giants is having a, uh, getting a phone call in the, in the doctor telling you uh, that you've, you've got cancer. Uh, you know, that's a giant. Or the doctor saying, oh, let's do some more examination. Right. Let's do some more tests. Let's do that. <laughs> Maybe those are giants. Yeah. What, what are your giants? What giants are you, you going to have to overcome? You've got to devour them like your bread. And when you devour those giants and move along, you or your bank account may uh, look uh, in the negative, may look right, in the red. Right, right. So it, that's a giant. But you've got to devour it. You've got to devour that giant. And that's a, your nourishment. Uh, to move on, and it's all about moving on. We want to move on. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, you know, for being uh, here. I'm going to turn it over to Cherry. I'm reminded of one thing that Smith Wigglesworth, the famous evangelist from England, said that out of great trials comes comes great faith. And I believe that, that once you eat up that giant and you're nourished and you're strong and you're courageous and you're living you know, in your inheritance, uh, then, then that is, um, helps you to succeed and it gives you, uh, that confidence, uh, for, 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 the, for, for the, the next, next time. Yeah, yeah. To eat up another giant. Hallelujah. And some of you, um, discouragement and, and, um, frustration, uh, has been something that you've had to, that has come to you. Those are giants. Those are giants. And we eat them up by, by speaking out the word of God and finding that right scripture uh, that you know in your heart is going to destroy uh, that giant so that you can, so that you can gobble him up. So I'm going to open up the, the floor and if you have any let comments me, let me just give an example from the one you just said let's say somebody's discouraged or anxious about something well find a promise like uh he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed, stayed on, on the yes. okay so you get that promise uh write it on the on your hand or put it on the mirror and you can start quoting it, it God will keep me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed, stayed on the Lord. And you begin to, you begin to uh, devour the giant of, of uh, disappointment and anxiety and, and you have hope. You've got to, you overcome hopelessness with, with scriptures, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with uh, the scriptures and the promises that he gives you. And you have to stand on those promises. 